Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to remove decimals and there are two functions that can do that. One is the int function, the int function, and the other one is the trunk function, a, the truncate function. Now let's say for example I have this number 115.736 both in the positive and negative format. I'll show you an example of how to use the int function with this and what it's going to do is it's going to lop off, it's going to cut off everything to the right of the decimal. So if I just use equal int and just include the number here, it will just bring back 115. Now when we're talking about decimals, it's going to round it down to the lowest decimal. So in this case, it's actually going to round it down way past 115. So as you know in math, the negative number, the higher the negative number, the lower it is. So what it's going to happen is when I use the int function and include this number, it's going to become 116. So that's what happens there. Now the trunk function is going to give you some more options. It can actually give you the option to specify to which decimal point to uh, cut it off. And so if I put equal trunk and then just add this number without any of the other arguments, the other argument is the number of digits and that's an optional argument. But if I don't put anything in there, I can just do close parentheses and press enter, it's going to assume that it's zero number of digits and it's just going to take everything off to the right of the decimal. So it's going to bring out 115. So if I wanted to go ahead and truncate a little bit further out, let's say I wanted to truncate to the tenth place, and I type in equal trunk and then click on that as a number and maybe have it go one digit after the decimal. So it's going to go ahead and bring out 115.7. So it's going to get rid of this 3.6 and then we see here we have a 105.7. I'm going to go ahead and just put the numbers here, 1 and 2 and maybe 3, and then I'm going to put a negative here for an example. And what, what I'm going to do here is for instead of that number 1, I'm going to reference here. So what happens when I copy it down, it's going to show me, it's going to bring back the 1 here into that second argument. So if I do that, you'll see that it, it, did, it did do that. So with a 2, what's going to happen is 105, it will bring back 73, so it's not going to do any rounding. So if I bring this down and click the fill handle and just bring it down here, it's going to copy the formula down. You notice that it copied the formula down. It's going to keep the 3, but just lop off the 6. And the same here with if it was out to, out to 3. Well, this would really just bring back the 6, but if I made that a 7, whoops, and then I increased it a little bit. All right. And if I bring this down, it's going to keep 736. So it's not going to round it up. It's going to keep 736. Now, when we get to the negative numbers, it becomes a little bit of a difference here. What it's going to do is it's going to go to the left of the decimal. So when it goes to the left of the decimal, what it's going to do is just make that a zero. So if I type in equal, or actually I can just copy it down here since I'm up here. I can go and click this fill handle here and just drag it down here. And when I let go, it's going to bring back negative 110. So basically, it just puts a zero to that place. And if this was a 2, if we did negative 2, it would just bring the zeros to the other two places there. So those are the examples that we have of uh, at least removing decimals with the integer function and portions of the trunk function. And when we get into negative numbers, what it does is we, it gives us a little bit more of some options to do that. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.